stream is now live. Mr. Chairman, we are live and recording and you may gavel in the meeting when ready. Thank you very much. Good morning. The open meeting of the Federal Election Commission for the 15th of December, 2022 will come to order. The first matters on our agenda this morning are two draft advisory opinions, both from Data Vault. I believe we have Mr. Burke as counsel. Good morning. Good morning, and Mr. Wessinger for the Office of General Counsel. If you'd be so kind, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, commissioners. Agenda document 2257A is a draft response to an advisory opinion request submitted by Data Vault Holdings Incorporated. The requester asks whether it may create and sell non fungible tokens, NFTs, to political committees for use in the committee's fundraising endeavors. Because Data Vault Data Vault proposes to sell the NFTs in the ordinary course of business at the usual and normal charge and under the same terms and conditions as its non political clients. The draft concludes that the proposals presented in the request would not result in prohibited in kind contributions and are therefore permissible. We receive no comments on the request or on the draft. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Counselor. I was remiss in not noting that Mr. Bradley, the CEO of the requester, is also here to answer questions of a technical nature. Colleagues, any questions for our office or for counsel or the requester? Mr. Weintraub? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm trying to figure out um, whether these NFTs are things of value. Uh, I think that the request says there's no secondary sale. Um, we're not anticipating a secondary market in this. So I'm trying to figure out if this is um, more like, a, this is a thing that has actual value or whether it's more like a certificate that a campaign might hand out saying, you know, you're now in the Patriots Club for, for your great campaign contribution. Uh, either, either the lawyer or the, or the requester, um, if either of you have a view on that, I'd be interested in knowing. Thank you, Commissioner Weintraub, and thanks for the opportunity to, to appear before you today, especially virtually on this very dreary DC day. Um, I, I think that um, to your question, uh, Commissioner Weintraub, there, there's value in the sense of a campaign hat having some value. So the value really is nominal. It is more akin to a certificate or some sort of recognition um, or you know, a sort of tchotchke that campaigns have offered throughout existence. That's kind of exactly the way I thought of it, as the digital tchotchke. All that's right. right. Thank you. Right. That's the technical term. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, Mr. Perk, in this um, opinion, we've made several assumptions with regard to uh, NFTs. Have we handled that appropriately? Are there any assumptions that we got wrong or maybe that, that needed expounding upon uh, beyond what, we, what we've done in this opinion? No, I don't believe so. I think the general counsel's office has really done a remarkable job here and has been uh, very easy to work with and understand the technology and described it accurately. I appreciate that, counsel. Certainly, Mr. Bradley, if you have anything you want to add here, but um, especially on the technical front. Uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, I, I, uh, I have nothing to add other, uh, to, other than to reiterate, uh, it has been a, a pleasure, uh, you know, providing the information and having the dialogue. I believe that the, um, the way that it reads is accurate with respect to the technology in my view. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Alex, for the discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want to draw uh, the requester's attention to footnote 25 uh, that says the, uh, the AOR refers to actions that political committees and their contributors, as opposed to data vault, would take to comply with the Act and Commission regulations. Ellipsis, I'm going to put in ellipsis and jump to the, the end. Because questions regarding the activities of third parties do not qualify as advisory opinion requests, the Commission has restricted its analysis to issues pertaining to data vault. So, um, you know, this, this advisory opinion says you can, you can sell your digital charges to the uh, campaign committee, but what they do with it, um, what contributors do with it, that's all beyond the scope of this opinion. 
Understood. Any further discussion? Any motions? Commissioner Cooksey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, with respect to draft advisory opinion 2022-22, uh, data, vault, data Vault 1, uh, I move approval of agenda document number 22-57-A, which is draft A. Thank you, sir. Colleagues, any discussion of the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is carried unanimously. We will move seamlessly into uh, Data Vault 2, which thankfully does not require any costume changes. Council, go ahead. Thank you. Agenda document 2256A is a draft response from an advisory print request submitted by Data Vault. The requester here asks whether it may, through a wholly owned subsidiary, license Adiotones, a patent and technology, to political committees for use in the committee's fundraising endeavors. Because Data Vault that data vault here too proposes to license audio tones to political committees in the ordinary course of business at the usual normal charge and on the same terms and conditions as non-political clients. The draft concludes that the proposal would not result in a prohibited in-kind contribution and is therefore permissible. We received no comments on the request or on the draft and I'm again happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, sir. Colleagues, any questions for our council or council of requester? Give your request himself. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is really more of a technical question. I'm, I'm not sure I really understand how this works. Could you uh, elaborate a little bit on that for us? Sure, I will defer to Mr. Bradley on that. Thank you, uh, Chairman and Mr. Burke. Um, I, I uh, would explain the technology this way. Uh, there is a tone uh, that uh, a human ear uh, cannot perceive, but a cell phone does perceive, and uh, a mobile response um, can be activated from that. Think of it a QR code that rides on sound. Um, if you're familiar with QR codes, um, it's, a, it's a visual process of lining up the camera of your phone to a, to a barcode uh, to invoke a response. And the technology emanates from technology that serves individuals that are visually disabled. Um, it's the same type of beacon that American Airlines would use from a kiosk to serve a visually impaired person. And uh, the uh, tones are um, proven safe, uh, utilized uh, by the FCC over broadcast to change when you're watching a, a sports program and you see it go from national television advertisement to a local advertisement, those windows are open and closed using tone uh, technology. Um, and that is the, the same type of tone uh, that is used in the audio technology. Uh, in this use case for elections, uh, a, a tone uh, can be emanated from signage. Uh, it can be emanated over the airways. Uh, so uh, think of satellite broadcast and uh, broadcasting that occurs uh, of um, all types, uh, whether it's streaming or um, radio or TV, uh, you're able to uh, present a tone uh, that invokes when the user opts in, when the user agrees and, and turns on the, the tool, um, they're able to uh, experience uh, a web response. So a website can open uh, content can be displayed. Um, items like if I if I ask you for a donation, I can open the donation pages of a web page uh, for the end user, and it's assistive technology uh, that allows for a mobile response over audio. What what triggers the tone? The, okay, the tone, uh, think of the tone as uh, a, it rides on sound, uh, nothing triggers it. It's, it's simply, uh, if you listen to sound, you might hear drums or a voice or a, a music track simultaneously uh, in a track. Think of one more layer in that sound that is inaudible. Um, so it, 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 there's, uh, it is not triggered. Uh, what is triggered is the listening. Uh, the listening for the tones. Um, if you're familiar with things like uh, 
uh, voice activated uh, systems like Siri or Google, when you say, hey, Google, uh, that is a voice response. They have to listen to the auditory realm to have that response. So in, in a sense, they're constantly listening. Uh, Adio, think of it as privacy, as the ability to have a tone that only I access when I want to access it, when I approve of that access. And the, the use of the tones is at my discretion, at my opt-in as a, a consumer. In this case, an American voting citizen would have the ability to activate their listening into tones that are presented to them, whether from signage, whether from broadcast or whether at a venue, um, such as a campaign rally or such, that I would be able to tune into a inaudible tone frequency that activates uh, a display of data. Sorry, that's what I'm, I'm trying to figure out is what activates it. So you go by a billboard and if you have set your app to listen for these tones, then it, it takes you to a, um, it, it's sort of always on and, and, and looking for these signals to pop up from billboards or from the rally or from some advertisement. It's not, it's not something where the user suddenly says, hey, I want to donate. Uh, hey, Adio, you know, send me a, send me a link to donate. I, I'm just trying to figure out how this works. Yeah. So, you, uh, yes, Chair, uh, Chairman, uh, we, we, uh, the, the user is always the opt-in uh, to turn on the ears. Uh, think of it like a voice that is on automatically. It's, it's out there. If you want to tune into it, it's a safe, inaudible tone that does not bother you. Uh, you cannot perceive it. It does not uh, have anything in its wake uh, that is affecting that consumer until the consumer opts in uh, to say, I would like to have political signage uh, data uh, delivered to my phone when it's available, when it's made available. And that can be based on my geolocation. It can be based on the show that I'm watching. It can be based on other data, uh, but it is entirely opted in by the consumer. It is a known, a uh, fully opted in system where I say, I will listen into these tones when they're available to me. And there might be visual prompts such as a sign to say, you know, there's an inaudible tone available. Uh, in this area. Now, this is this is our technologies patented in the United States. There's several uh, patents that that cover the use case, including the use case inside elections. And that United States built technology. Uh, it was built uh, by a group out of Georgia Tech, a team of, uh, of technologists that built this technology patented in the U.S. Uh, the the technology. Uh, allows for a consumer to opt in for privacy. Um, it is the antithesis of Siri or Hey Google or a lot of the other voice activated systems that must listen to our audio tracks and have been been based on our opt in, based on our our similar opt in, have been choosing to listen to our voice tracks. And if you if you've experienced where you've spoken to somebody about something and then looked at your cell phone and said, wow, I talked about trucks and then now here's a truck ad um, that it, that comes from uh, our opting in to a listening device that is in our proximity. Um, our invention solves for that. It, it, it's it's about consumer privacy. Our company Data Vault is about consumers owning and controlling their own data assets and Americans being able to monetize it to offset things like inflation, offset things like uh, other costs that they encounter in life, uh, but for them to be able to control their own data set. Similarly, the audio tone for, for campaigns is a private layer. Um, if for the campaigns themselves that, that need a, a layer of privacy and need to create privacy between them and voters in their districts, for example, um, these tones allow us to help candidates identify people um, as being in their district or from their district or a voice that is uh, from their district. 
Um, and, and that 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 can have benefit in the future. Um, as you'll see with our request, it's simply to use the technology um, to, to continue our work in privacy and data monetization on behalf of consumers. Uh, but the, the audio tone is, is focused on those consumers that are our customers who are candidates uh, who run campaigns or have initiatives to be elected um, where this tool allows them to privately connect. Uh, with a consumer that's opted in to say, I live in the district of this representative and I want to tune into their tone. That is, that's the request. I think Mr. Bradley may have meant uh, chairman or chairperson emeritus, uh, Commissioner I'm, Weintraub. If, if, I think I can, I can clarify um, what Mr. Bradley is saying in terms of what I think your question is. The triggering event is really no different than any other campaign promotion, whether it's an ad or a billboard or things like that. Um, it's just using, it's reaching uh, potential contributors using this technology the same way it would try to reach uh, contributors in the more traditional sense. So if an ad is run, it says, you know, here's our website, contribute, uh, that type of thing. Um, this would just simply be another way of doing that. I would just lastly uh, say uh, that uh, it is also uh, the cybersecurity uh, and other other elements that are mandated for these solutions are in place uh, in this process, uh, that we, we have a heightened uh, interest and a heightened sensitivity around cybersecurity. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. Uh, that fulsome explanation sufficient, Commissioner. Yes, I thought it was very interesting. Outstanding. Any further discussion or questions? Are there any motions? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, with respect to draft advisory opinion 2022-23, Data Vault 2, I move approval of agenda document number 22-56-A, which is draft A. Thank you, Commissioner. Colleagues, any discussion of the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks very much. Of course. Thank you. Stay dry out there. We'll do. You too. Uh, Next matter on our agenda is a draft notification of availability in regs 22 06 concerning disgorgement. Council. Thank you, Chairman Dickerson. Good morning, Commissioners. Agenda document 22-59-A contains a draft notification of availability for a petition for rulemaking submitted to the Commission by the Campaign Legal Center. The petition asks the Commission to amend or clarify its regulations regarding the refunding of contributions that violate the source of prohibitions or amount limitations of the Federal Election Campaign Act. The notifi notification seeks comment on whether the Commission sh should commence a rulemaking based on this petition. The common period will run for 60 days following publication of the notification in the Federal Register. After the comment period has concluded and after comments have been considered, the Commission may decide whether to initiate a rulemaking. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Council. Colleagues? Any motions? Madam Vice Chair. With respect to draft legislative rec oh, nope, wrong, sorry. With respect to um, regulation 2022-06, uh, disgorgement draft notification of availability, I move approval of agenda document number 22-59-A. Yeah. Discussion of the motion? Mr. Washington. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to uh, repeat what we have said uh, on previous occasions that when we put something out for comment, we really do want comments. Uh, and uh, I think it's an interesting uh, petition, and, and I hope we will get interesting comments that will help inform the commission. Three. In fact, I'd, I'd add something. I, I've written on this topic, um, and I think that this this petition reflects a very healthy give and take um, during the state of our rules. So I, I, I hope this is one that can can move forward and hopefully in an enlightened and informed way as a result of the comment period. So sincerely, please, please weigh in on this. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is carried unanimously. 
Thank you, Council. The next matter on our agenda, as was forecast, is our uh, draft legislative recommendation for 2022. Mr. Pugh, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. And uh, commissioners, before you today, for your approval, are 15 draft legislative recommendations in agenda document 22-58-A. This year, the recommendations are divided into three groups. The first group of the highest priority legislative recommendations includes making the administrative fine program permanent and two related to FICA's foreign national prohibition, which is a continuing priority for the commission. Increasing the compensation for the staff director and general counsel positions is also in the highest priority group. Other priority legislative recommendations include eight related to the Federal Elections Maintain Act, and the third group includes three other improvements recommended by the commission. Once the commission has approved legislative recommendations, we will provide them to the administration and to Congress. The commission received a comment on the draft legislative recommendation, which has been published on FEC.gov. And at the appropriate time, I'd like to suggest two citation revisions to address a concern raised by that comment. Developing these recommendations started with potential topics suggested by FEC staff and commissioners. And I'd like to thank the chairman for making the finishing of this project this year a priority for the commission. And I'd like to thank all the commissioners and as always all my colleagues from throughout the agency for their excellent contributions to this year's package of legislative recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. I think this may be an appropriate time to forecast your suggested edits as we discuss. Okay, sure thing. That's um, it's on page 23 and 24. We suggest adding the relevant portions of the two citations. One is to section 306 of FICA, and the other is to section 316 of FICA. Um, we do not intend to suggest that those sections should be removed. Entirely, but we thought the portions relevant to the issues that raised should be adjusted by Congress. And uh, that was the concern the commenter raised. That's one of them. And we thought making it explicit and crystal clear would, would avoid this concern. Thank you. Alex, this question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Pugh, for all your work on these. Um, I apologize. I didn't give you any warning about this question, but it occurred to me now. Um, are there plans for your office to hold these recommendations in abeyance until a new Congress is sworn in in, in 19 days? I could see it uh, being an inconvenient time to send it over you know, next week when before committee staff change, membership changes, new members are sworn in, other members are, uh, are leaving. So could you just let us know, assuming that these um, are approved by the commission, how you would, or when you would plan to transmit them over? Um, our plan is to, transmit them as soon as the commission approves them. Um, but of course, that's up to the commissioners. Can you write a December timeframe? Of course, well for the commission, not so well for our audience, uh, particularly in the House where the majority is about to change. Um, so if, if it's up to the commissioners, I think waiting would be. Um, well, I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I mean, if it's amenable to, if my colleagues are amenable to it, I might suggest that we, as part of the approval, sort of direct Mr. Pugh to um, deliver these upon the commencement of the 118th Congress on January 3rd or shortly thereafter. Further discussion? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I appreciate the suggestion, but I don't think that it's going to get lost in the paperwork. Um, while, while I believe that there would be a new, we all know a new Congress will be coming in place, I, I don't see the need of, of delay sending this over. So while I appreciate the comment, I wouldn't be as supportive of that um, choice. Mr. Uh, I was gonna make, I, I, I heard one of my colleagues whispering that I was gonna make the same suggestion. We could send it now and then send it again at the beginning of the new Congress. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Pugh, please. I should have added that is our usual course too with respect to members who join our committees and, and leadership, but even uh, or rank and file members of House administration or rules in the administration in the Senate. We have a letter for our new chairman to send to. Presumably, this is a problem that comes up every two years. So I 
I would hope we have a plan of action for it. Uh, I think I think that's a fine solution to send it twice. And I'll say my personal experience, given that physical offices are changing and people are taking over desks, and Commissioner Weintraub may have a similar experience. I have found other people's papers in my new desk uh, in Congress, uh, uh, and I took over a new office. So it is. Um, it does happen with some regularity that papers do get lost in the uh, as the architect of the Capitol moves things around. So uh, I think um, a belt and suspenders approach might be might be the best way to do it. Commissioner Stark. Commissioner Weintraub. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want to thank um, not only Mr. Pugh and all the staff who participated, but also all my colleagues. I thought we had a, a very productive um, uh, set of discussions um, behind the scenes amongst ourselves, uh, resulting in 15 what I believe will be unanimous recommendations. And I think it strengthens the position of the recommendations when they, they come from the, um, from the Commission as, a, as unanimous recommendations. We've been able to do that over the last uh, number of, uh, of years, uh, do an unanimous package, and, uh, and this is a particularly robust unanimous package. I think we're adding to the number of, uh, that we've had before. I'm sure everybody's got their favorites on the list, but I, uh, I appreciate that uh, uh, the process that led to this and that we uh, are speaking with one goal. I love all my recommendations you today, Commissioner. <laughs> Colleagues, any further discussion? Out of last year. Um, I also want to you know, extend my thanks to um, Stu and Spike. Um, this process has been you know, quite interesting and has really brought about some really great conversations um, between each other. Um, and I think we all have, in, the, in this process, we've also thought about additional recommendations. And I think maybe we'll have unanimity on in the future. Um, as we kind of think and and, and but it's it's been a great way for us to all work together on this, and I've enjoyed this experience. So thank you both for leading this. Further discussion? Oh, this is this is one of the I, I seldom have as much confidence in calling a vote on as I do on this one. Are there any motions? Mr. Christie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, with respect to draft legislative recommendations for 2022. I move approval of agenda document number 22-58-A, subject to uh, the edits discussed at the table by staff and subject to the uh, commission's direction about uh, transmission discussed at the table. Thank you, Commissioner. Colleagues, discussion the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is carried unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pugh. Best of luck dealing with the office news up there. So that concludes our substantive business for today. There's one last thing on the agenda, and I um, will take a moment of personal privilege before we move to that. Uh, it's it's customary, as I understand it, um, to say a few words at one's last open meeting as chair, uh, and this seems like the right time before we we um, elect our our officers for the upcoming year. And I I find it a surprisingly awkward duty. Um, one thing I'm a acutely aware of the dangers of premature victory celebrations. Uh, for another, valedictory comments feel out of place from a commissioner who will continue to serve. Um, and as I've said at our last meeting, I prefer to let our work speak for itself. And we've done a great deal together over the last year. Uh, we began by updating our forms to recognize independent expenditure committees more than a decade after the unanimous First Amendment decision that created them. And years after a bipartisan group of leading practitioners asked us to do so, uh, we've updated our regulations to reflect other decisions in the federal courts, oftentimes years after those decisions were handed down. We've reached agreement on more than 20 advisory opinions and provided that guidance to the regulated community. And just last week, for basically the first time in a generation, we succeeded in adopting a substantive regulation that will make it easier for political speakers to comply with their legal duties. But I wanna emphasize that this is work we've all done. Um, an agency is, is just its people. This agency in particular has been privileged to have uh, a long tradition of people who have decided to dedicate uh, the bulk of their careers to the service of, of its mission. And so I, it's another tradition, I wanna take a few moments to talk about some, some of our 
our longer serving staff uh, who are reaching in impressive milestones. Uh, I have a list here. I'm, I'm going to limit myself to just 20 years or above because even that is a pretty impressive list of people. Um, and all these folks, I, I hope, are going to get the appropriate recognition from their, their management, but I want to take this moment in public um, in an official capacity on behalf of the full commission to, to thank all of you. So at 20 years, uh, and this goes up quite a ways, so we're going to start at 20. Uh, Pamela Jones, Scott Dotsler, Miller Rominski, John Lally, Steve Hazard, Natalia Iafe, Miller Jones, and Amy Pike. 25 years, uh, Daniel Kent, Paul Burgess, and Hartsock, Wayne Pugh, I think it's still in the room. Uh, Deborah Holloway, Hong Hyun, Mark Schonkweiler, and Benita Alberta. 30 years, Sandy Latimer, David Bloomberg, Delbert Rigsby, Jennifer Boyd, Debbie Chitona, and Anita Bailey. This keeps going at 35 years. I, I will remind everyone this agency was founded in 1974. Uh, at 35 years, Johnny Harris, Larry Calvert, sir. Uh, Marie Dixon, and Tony Buckley. I hope you've also saw her. Uh, I'll be honest, I had no idea. None of you look like you yeah. could possibly have been here for 35 years. I might, but you all don't. Uh, 40 years, Pat Dunn, and, and finally at 45 years, uh, Cindy Myers. Um, that's, that's really remarkable. And I, I, I'm an old believer in institutions, and I, I really respect those of you who have chosen to serve this institution. So thank you. Um, also, I'm going to take a, another point of personal privilege. You just call out one of our 15-year veterans, Mr. Broussard. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, Commissioner, throwing you on the spot there. Um, so before we pass the proverbial baton, I wanted to thank everyone who helped over the past year to, to accomplish some of the things I listed and the many things I didn't. Um, and on a personal note, I wanted to thank a few people who are not generally in the public eye, uh, but who have been essential to the functioning of this agency and to my sanity over the last year. Uh, starting with Tiffany Parson Kennedy, who's um, a legend inside the building, is, is the fixer for everything that goes wrong, who has saved my staff and me personally at odd hours um, from the curse of government technology, uh, and is might be the person most, most responsible for this new functioning of this agency through the COVID pandemic. I, I may slightly be exaggerating there, but I really don't think so. Um, so, so Tiffany, thank you. Um, I, I know you're you're not a public figure, and I hope I didn't just make you one. Uh, the Office of Commission Secretary, uh, another just unheralded uh, part of this APC uh, that I wanted to call out before moving along. Uh, Laura Sinram, our, our our secretary, and Vicki Allen, Marie Bennett, and, and Zainab Smith have just been instrumental to this place working. And none of that is apparent to the public, and I know that. But we notice, I notice, um, and I'm very grateful. And then I wanted to especially thank the vice chairs I've had the privilege of serving with. Um, you know, Steve Walter was a gentleman and a steady hand. I miss him. Um, I miss his friendship. And uh, Gary Lindbaum has been a breath of fresh air, a steely practitioner and a warm presence. Um, you can put that on your business card. Uh, I've enjoyed working with her, and I'm confident that the commission will be in good hands in the year. And finally, and I, I am about to conclude, uh, I want to thank the person who is, in my opinion, most responsible for the newfound confidence and capability of this agency. I have noted that nothing we did this year would have been possible without Chair Broussard's leadership um, had she not handled the enormous backlog that we were gifted in early 2021. We would not have had the time, space, and confidence and the trust required to begin breaking the decades long log jams that have bedeviled this commission. Uh, this year, she's been the key voice in advancing our law and war of mission to clarify the law, educate the public, and encourage voluntary compliance. She doesn't seek the limelight, but the public needs to know how crucial she is to the FEC's success. Uh, the public and the press may still, be, may still be stuck in the partisan fights of a decade ago, but those with eyes to see ought to see. There's been a changing of the guard here and a newfound ability and willingness to move beyond disagreement, find common ground, and to do the people's work. And Sean Broussard has been the vanguard of that. So with those parting thoughts, I'd like myself before I turn to John Boehner here.
<laughs> I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see what we will accomplish under our new leaders, and I am happy to entertain appropriate motions. Commissioner Fifty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for those um, great remarks. I really uh, enjoyed them. Again, I join you in congratulating all the um, staff who have reached milestones of federal service, which is really impressive um, to dedicate yourself to to uh, public service like that. So, congratulations to all those uh, who were named. Um, it's my privilege to nominate Vice Chair Daryl Lindenbaum to serve as the chair of the Federal Election Commission for calendar year 2023. Uh, Vice Chair Lindenbaum is the newest member of the commission, uh, but she has jumped feet first into the deep end, uh, taking on the important role of uh, vice chair immediately when she, uh, when she joined us and uh, brought a significant amount of outside experience and expertise to bear on our work as the vice chair. She's worked uh, diligently to forge compromises and solutions to uh, commission business. And she's uh, able to disagree without being disagreeable. She makes it her priority to maintain effective working relationships with everyone. And that's how you get things done around here. So I think she's uh, gonna have a very, uh, a very long highlight reel uh, this time, uh, 12 months from now uh, to talk about uh, uh, what we've accomplished. Uh, so uh, I've enjoyed getting to know her, uh, swapping stories about our kids, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with her more. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, for all those reasons, again, it's my pleasure to, buy, uh, to nominate Vice Chair Lindenbaum uh, to be Commission Chair for calendar year 2023. A welcome motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 That one, that one carried with five in favor. Uh, Commissioner Broussard, Commissioner Weintraub, Commissioner Cooksey, and Commissioner Trainer, along with myself and the Vice Chair, uh, modestly abstaining. Further motions? Madam Vice Chair. Excuse me. Yes, Madam Vice Chair. Got ahead of, my, ahead of myself there. Madam Chair elect, I like that. We're going to use that. Um, I now have the privilege of nominating um, Mr. Cooksey as uh, Vice Chair for the year 2023. Um, uh, Prior to his appointment as commissioner, um, Commissioner Cooksey served as general counsel to U.S. Senator Josh Hawley um, and um, uh, deputy chief counsel to Senator Ted Cruz. And as we've already seen in this meeting, Commissioner Cooksey has brought a critical perspective to our work as um, former counsel to two United States senators. Um, now, we come from very opposite sides of the aisle. But from the start, we've created a collaborative relationship where we just pick up the phone um, and really work together to make this agency better and have real conversations about the matters before us. And we've both I think, been operating under the assumption that the other one is always operating in good faith and that we are being completely transparent about our intentions and our goals. And that has served us well time and time again already in our, our, our few short months together. Um, so um, I am really looking forward to working with him more closely. This commission will really benefit from his open-minded leadership, his incredible writing skills, um, and uh, we will work together to steadily steer the ship um, as modeled by commissioners. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair, Chair Elect, Commissioner. Um, all the titles. Discussion of the motion. Being none. All in favor. Aye. 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 Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. That completes the business of this meeting. And oh, I apologize. There's a question of point of personal privilege to be raised by the vice chair. Thank you. Um, I am eternally grateful um, for all the chairman has done to help me get uh, acclimated to the commission. And now is the job of chair. He and his fantastic staff have gone out of their way to make sure me and my staff that everything they think uh, will be helpful for us and are completely transparent, always willing to jump on the phone and talk to us. Um, ben has been transparent and open-minded and it has been a true joy to serve as his vice chair. I get to take the helm when there is no backlog of enforcement matters and we can focus on making this agency stronger. I am grateful to my fellow commissioners and the commission staff for getting us this point. I'll start with Commissioner Broussard though. Um, she became chair upon her appointment and hit the ground running. Uh, she and her team were relentless, I heard that they were relentless, as they pushed the commissioners and staff to churn through cases that had been sitting idly by um, during the lack of, of forum. Um, the chair 
said that she doesn't often get the credit or the limelight she deserved, but um, Commissioner Broussard, you really do deserve this credit. Um, you pushed everybody and you put us in this condition that we are in now. And then when the chairman took the gavel, he finished out that push. In addition, Commissioner Broussard and, and Chairman Dickerson's tag team has not only cleared the backlog, but as everyone has been seeing, they've pushed through rulemakings and proposed rulemakings. I'm looking forward to seeing what their partnership will continue to do as they both remain on the education committee and continue to make us stronger and help regulate the community. Uh, and as, as I said, I've enjoyed working with Commissioner Cooksey over these last few months, and I look forward um, to, uh, to having Commissioner Dick, uh, Broussard and Dickerson's relationship serve as a model for us um, as we take over. Uh, I just have a little gift for you. Oh, no. Unfortunately, since we're here on first time, you have to take my, my approach to wrapping is just trying to make sure a four year old can't get into it. That was so. part of the problem. <laughs> Oh, it's a new game. Are you stronger than a fourth grader? Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, no, you put Latin on here. <laughs> you go use this. Uh, I'm not going to do this live in public. Oh, I thought you would know it. Oh, there's another part. Oh, there is. Clearly. <laughs> I hope it's in there. I thought it's, you know, modern art. Right. You know, the, the, the absence is part of what it's trying to convey about the giving up of the chair. And the... That is lovely. Thank you very much. Um, well, I'm going to use it. So uh, it, it's, it's a, um, I, I, with that, Matt, Mr. Chap Director, is there any the management or administrative matters requiring our attention that we have not just been dealing with? Uh, Mr. Chairman, there are no such matters. Appreciate it, sir. Colleagues, we are adjourned. Stand by.